Six years ago, in 2018, Devilman Crybaby debuted on Netflix and had a lot of people talking. People called it anime of the year, some people absolutely hated it, I remember when PewDiePie talked about it and his profile picture turned into Ryo, and heck, Ryo is still a part of his PFP today, I know that's him. You either loved the animation or thought it was ass, and I'm sure this brought everyone's attention to Science Saru as an animation studio making waves from Masaki Iwasa's killer year in 2017. It's a polarizing show for uh, very obvious reasons when you start watching it. It's incredibly violent, gore heavy, and sexually charged. I genuinely haven't seen anything else as overtly violent as this for the most part. There are some scenes I will never forget, and I mean that in a scarring way. Not the ceiling scene though, Devilman Crybaby ceiling never fails to make me laugh. Anyways, tis the season for spooky tidings, and after coincidentally rewatching the entirety of the show, I wanted to quickly prepare all of this for Halloween, my first seasonally themed video. I've always loved the concept of those, but anyways, today we're diving into Devilman Crybaby and taking a look back at everything the show had to say when it hit the scene. This video will contain spoilers and a content disclaimer that I'll be going over very heavy topics presented in the show, so just be wary if you can't really handle that stuff. I'm also going to assume that you guys have already seen the show, so I'm not going to explain anything, and I'm not going to mention the original Devilman adaptations because I'm only familiar with Devilman Crybaby. With that out of the way, let's go party! I first watched this series sometime during my first semester of grade 10 in 2019 when I was just a wee 15 year old. I should not have made that decision. Needless to say, the show is pretty intense for adults even, and I didn't know what to expect when watching this at the time, but I thought it looked cool, people liked it, and I already loved Masaki Iwasa's work, so I dove right in and made it through to the end because I kind of had to at that point. I generally remember liking it, but I probably had this feeling of never needing to watch it ever again, but five years later, I did, and here we are today. So now that I've seen it with my high and mighty young adult brain, I can say that I understand it more now than I ever did back then, cause duh, no shit. Let's get some technical stuff out of the way first though. The music in this show is phenomenal guys. Ooh, it's so good. You're hearing some of it right now in this video. Can you believe it? The rendition of Devilman no Uta is a classic. Classic alert, guys. What a classic. It's full of incredible synths and sounds of all kinds. Kensuke Ushio truly outdid himself. While the animation is controversial to some, I think it's great. There were genuine moments though where I questioned what happened to the budget for certain scenes, but those are very few and far between. The art style of the entire project is killer. I don't care what anyone says. Everyone getting yassified by the devil is just funny to look at. They get so edgy with their eyeliner, and I think it works. Yes, it's strange, but would you rather live your life without the Devilman Crybaby run? The show gets pretty experimental at points, which isn't a surprise coming from Masaki Iwasa, but that club scene does get pretty crazy. I did not like watching those boobs turn evil, let me tell ya. The first episode I'd say has the most experimentation from what I can remember. It's experimental throughout, but that club scene it just takes the cake and makes a huge impression. I also like how goofy the animation can be. There's a lot of funny expressions and faces we get to see from the characters, especially Akira at that dinner table. He's so silly. The movement of characters is incredibly expressive too. Everything's exaggerated, fluid, and strong, especially during fight scenes. The artistry is strong, and I respect it heavily. I'm never going to forget the look of the show, and with that, let's get into the story. So, what is Devilman Crybaby actually about? It goes from fighting off evil demons to trying to save humanity as a whole, all against that TWINK! When I rewatched the whole show, it honestly made me sad <laughs> that it kind of perfectly fits in today's climate, which is not good, you guys! It covers how even a single instigator can get everything to crumble in the worst way possible. All the systems in place that are supposed to protect and quote unquote save everyone work against us. The idea of it could even be someone you know or someone right next to you causes a frenzy. Fear really takes hold so easily and changes everything in an instant. The world is divided in the worst way possible to the extreme, and the tonal shift of the show gets incredibly dark towards the end. 
It starts off crazy at the beginning, but for a little bit we mainly see high school shenanigans and Akira going after evil devils, but then it just shifts instantly, and you know, maybe that's a parallel to what's going on in the show. This is when the show gets overtly violent and gory. Like, <laughs> there's one scene I haven't forgotten about since I was 15, and it's just a lot. People have it out for one another in a constant state of panic, questioning if the people around them are devils or human. Several humans die in vain. They're tortured and abused at the stake, literally. And absolutely no one has the decency to stand up and defend humanity. Except for the devil man himself and Miki. But they both end up dead, so where does that leave us? In my eyes, Akira and Miki both represent love. They embody the good of humanity. Miki more than Akira while the rest embody the worst. We see the overindulgence of sex and excessive violence from everyone else. The show is grotesque and shocking, hard to watch at several points, but it's not for the sake of being shocking. It's ugly because it's honest about the worst of the world, the most disgusting we can be. But Akira and Miki are earnest. They're like beacons of light to everyone else. Akira cries for everyone and Miki sees the best in everyone. She's loving, caring, trusting, and wants to welcome everyone in open arms. Their efforts do change how some people feel towards everything, but ultimately the world ends along with Akira and Miki. Miki's death scene in particular is the scene I was talking about that scarred me because it's just so gruesome, and I loved Miki. I wanted her and Ratboy to be together. Akira's death is a real twist. A lot of people don't seem to like this ending, they either have mixed feelings or feel unfulfilled by it, but I think it's perfect. The only way it could have ended. Where Akira fights for love, Ryo is literally Satan. He has no soul, he has no heart. That's why he destroys the world. Or so we think. At the end of everything though, Ryo for a moment is happy that him and Akira are together alone. Because he's loved him all along. I forgot how obvious it is that Ryo's in love with Akira. Like, <laughs> um, yeah. But Ryo slowly realizes that everything he's done for this moment is all for naught because Akira is dead, and that's when it hits. He recognizes that he feels sad and gets overwhelmed with genuine emotion. He gets his what have I done moment. So funnily enough, in the name of love, Ryo's destroyed the world and is left with nothing. Hate and love are both destructive forces. In the end, Satan is a sad man. Why is Devilman Crybaby special then? Why am I talking about it now after it came out six years ago? I don't know, I just feel like watching it again, and in doing that, it's become one of my favorite animes that I definitely won't be coming back to all the time because it's not necessarily a fun watch throughout. I just think it's a really interesting show that has a lot to say, and you could dissect it for hours. There's a lot I didn't even mention or talk about because I mainly just wanted to stick to the biggest theme of the show, I think, and maybe I could have gotten an even more depth, but whatever, my video, my rules. Everyone's got their own interpretations of everything, and it's fun to discuss. I love Devilman Crybaby. It's a killer show, and I think everyone should watch it at some point in their life, because it's like nothing else. To this day, I can't even think of anything else that comes close to being like this show, but hey, maybe I just haven't seen everything. That's Devilman Crybaby, have a spooky Halloween, and thanks for watching guys, bye bye SHUT UP YOU STUPID BITCH! Hi ya!